and welcome to Wise Up On Air. I'm here with Alan Lee. How's it going, Alan? Hello, hello. Oh. How are you? I'm doing fantastic today. Thanks That's for great. being here. Uh, I'm Damien Kaspauer, Software Product Manager here at Audio Kinetic. Alan, what's your title and role? Um, you know, I have been, you know, I, I've been preparing for this, but like the one thing I haven't prepared for is how to introduce myself. <laughs> Classic, right? Right off the bat. We're off to a great start, aren't we? We're doing good. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm Alan Lee. I work, I am a developer at Audio Kinetic working in the R&D department. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. It's been good to have you last uh, year or so. Um, that you've That's been right. with us yep. and Almost applying yourself to this, uh, the topic today, which is early reflections in WISE. Uh, That's right. We're okay. going to be talking about reflections. We're going to be talking about phasing, mostly phasing, since that is the title of this, uh, title of this stream. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's one it's little corner of the, uh, of the acoustics world, but I think that's, it's, a very interesting sort of corner to visit um, oh, yeah. and it becomes quite i think important especially when we're building out acoustic environments which we're doing more and more of these days right because it's the the simultaneous like drive towards realism exactly yeah with uh with that creative piece as well because it's not always uh exciting to mm -hmm. be real. So having the mm -hmm. control to, uh, you know, shape that in the way that suits different experiences. Uh, yeah, exactly. I think that's going to be sort of like the theme for, for today's stream. It's that sort of, how do you balance, you know, creativity with what's going on in real life? And, you know, what are some of the tools that we're going to give you in, or that we give you in wise 23one to kind of help you <laughs> navigate through that, uh, through that balance. Exactly, exactly. So congrats on the release and all of the features that you've uh, helped bring to Reflect plugin. Uh, for folks who are out there in the world tuned in, drop any questions you have in the chat. Good to see a few of you tuned in today. So yeah, keep us uh, keep us up to date with how you're thinking. And if there are questions, uh, bring them to the live stream. We'll be happy to unpack your questions. So and dig that. we are in the holiday season too. So let us know if you're wearing a holiday sweater. Oh yeah. Uh, the question there is hot chocolate marshmallows or no marshmallows. Oh, hundred percent marshmallows. Yes. Love them. Same. Yeah. Same. I don't know if this is like the same degree as like pineapple on pizza sort of deal, but absolutely, I would, I would, I love marshmallows and hot chocolate, and then top that off with whipped cream. Oh, yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, let's get wild. Cinnamon in hot chocolate. Uh, I like it on the. Um, I like it on the whipped cream. I'm yeah. not too sure about like have having it mixed into the hot chocolate before, but yeah, just gotcha. like having it on the whipped cream, you get that kind of like that scent going. Mm -hmm. It's you know gets you kind of ready to to drink that hot chocolate. You're yeah. super excited. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, tis the season. Tis thank the you. Season. Thank indeed. you. And your sweater <laughs> is fantastic. I have to say. Oh, thank you. It's got the little duck on it for uh, that's right. Wise ducking, little yeah. cats. We got cats. Uh, yeah, it's looking the, good. The uh, the folks uh, responsible at AK for bringing the sweater to life has done a fantastic job. I look forward to the next batch of Christmas sweaters. Oh yeah. I'm not yeah. sure when that's gonna come, but I'm nice. excited. Nice. All right. Cool. Uh, well. We got a question already coming in from the chat. Oh, it, okay. it goes deep right out of the gate. So thank you for bringing that. It's uh, it's here we go. Like before we even get into the agenda, we are like on it. So question coming in while they haven't used reflect personally, the question is how many individual delay lines are playing back at one time? That's a, that's a good question. Um, one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so in 
in the DSP world, you can you can think of each uh, each reflections as its own individual delay line, but keeping track of all those different delay lines gets to be quite expensive computationally. But instead, what you can do is you can actually represent you can uh, you can represent all of those delays with just one giant delay line, and then have it tapped off. Each reflection would be tapped off at different points. So just the one, but one big delay line. Right, and when you say taps, it's kind of like the uh, the orders of reflections that is uh, that you can scale inside it's, of the reflect plugin as well. Uh, ostensibly, yes. I, I prefer to think of it more as uh, the tap is sort of like the delay time. So if you have like a three millisecond, mm. then you tap it at that point, uh, and then five milliseconds, you have a different. You tap it at a further further point at the uh, delay line. Got it. Okay. Cool. Wow right into it here today uh mm -hmm. talking about early reflections thanks for the question hopefully that answered your question and let's jump into an overview of the agenda today yeah absolutely cool so first All we're right. going to tackle what is phasing that's right yeah uh and then uh, it's just going to be a brief just sort of description on what phasing is what it sounds like to us and then we're going to jump into uh, what I like to call the intuitive guide to phasing physics. Uh, I feel like I should have added a little bit more on a manapia there, but that's good enough for now. But we're just going to take just a quick glance. If we want to understand phasing, you know, I think it's worthwhile to jump a little bit into the physics. Um, and then building on the knowledge that we have from that, we're going to jump right into talking about some of the tools to mitigate mitigate that phasing effect in Reflect. And then at the end, we're just going to sum everything up, tie it with a nice ribbon, and boop, boop. send it off. Exactly. Nice, nice. And we're going to go hands-on at some point with Wise and Unreal to exactly. hear some of the phenomenon, uh, you know, run some scenarios, and yep. uh, it's going to be a great conversation. So stick I around. I think so, yeah. Uh, keep the questions coming. We're here. All right. So what is phasing? What is phasing? Well, let's jump right in. So I'm reasonably certain that many of you watching this right now know what phasing sound like, especially if you dabble in music production. But I'm going to start from the way beginning here. Let's let's start from square one. So I can talk about what phasing can sound like, but I think the best thing to do is just to show you what it sounds like. So I have a drum clip on the right here. And we're just gonna play the original sound without any phasing applied. And uh, perhaps a volume warning, perhaps maybe, I think all it'll right. be all right. All right, let's play it. So that's drums. Sick beat. It's, uh, it's it's a little uh, it might be a little bit off kilter, but that just tells me that I need to work on my finger drumming a little bit more. <laughs> um, practice makes perfect, right? Humans. Um, okay, so <laughs> go ahead. Humans. Uh, Humans. Keep right. that human piece of it. Yeah. That's right. That's Not right. Bad. Not bad. <laughs> so that's uh, that's drums without any phasing. So let's listen to it with some phasing applied. This is going to get funky. So get ready. So that's with phasing and notice how it there's sort of like a thin sound like it doesn't sound quite as full as the original original sound maybe you could probably even call it like hollow and so a popular description of phasing that that I see often is it sounds like as if you were listening to the sound through a drain pipe um other popular sort of descriptions um, they they would say that it sounds like as if a jet plane were flying overhead, and that that's really prominent when uh, when you listen to the effects of phasing in music. It's a very popular effect that, that spans multiple genres. If you've played around with guitar pedals, like you see here at all, chances are you've played with phasing or flanging effects, and that's that's really what uh, what phasing is. I've never played with the Mutron phaser though, Damien. I've that's uh, uh that's I put that there because it's one of my favorites. Uh okay. 
I, I have gone through many phases nice. of phaser and uh it's not just a phase for me right uh right i take it very personally uh as part of my guitar practice and uh the mutron phaser is excellent example of it uh, along with the mutron by phase which was actually a dual mm -hmm. phaser uh famous on uh smashing pumpkin siamese dream Ooh, okay. uh, and you know for me, phase is this touchstone in rock and roll, right? It's like um, the drums on some of the Zeppelin albums. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a tune on Check Your Head by the Beastie Boys that phases all over the place. And if anyone listens to Tame Impala, like steeped in this kind of phase cancellation, almost like a jet engine swooshing and whooshing, as we heard in your example of the drums. But that's really that creative piece of phasing, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, adding a little bit of that psychedelic element into the in the into the fragrant tea that is music. I mean, it? that is how we identify it, right? It because it mm -hmm. uh, it warps or accentuates a kind of sense of uh, of of frequencies, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Which we're going to see uh, a little bit later on. Uh, it's it's really it's really interesting how you know how certain patterns are uh, certain patterns in in frequencies and, and music that that our that our ears pick up. It's just it makes uh, it, it, our brain does some really spooky things. Yeah, and, uh, that's what keeps things interesting, doesn't it? Totally, totally. So, question coming in from the chat from Adam. Ooh, you know, right. wondering if Doppler can be thought of as a phasing effect. Ooh. That's a good question. I would say, strictly speaking, no. But I will say that I think Doppler does come in. It, it is an important part, especially in the, especially when you're adding like creative effects, like what we were talking about yeah. with guitar pedals and whatnot. Um, there's like sort of a frequency shift that happens, and I would say, ostensibly speaking, like yeah, you could sort of think about doppler uh sort of being into the mix that way but i think to be to be technical i would say doppler is not part of phasing gotcha gotcha you can think of it more it's more strictly a frequency shift but sure. when you add that into the phasing mix that's when mm, things get very interesting <laughs> <laughs> cool hopefully okay. that answered your question it's a good one uh so speaking of interesting I'm going to have you wiggle your microphone settings somehow okay. because we're getting uh, comments about a little bit of crackling on your voice. And it doesn't sound exactly like, uh, you know, peaking or distortion. It's okay. just kind of a weird uh, zipper once in a while. And so, maybe... you know, there's there's times where I sound like a chipmunk and that's when the sampling rates are are mismatched. So let me know, do I sound like a chipmunk? Does it sound like I've been inhaling helium? <laughs> let us know. No, not yet. Not uh, yet. Tell me when. Uh, I'll tell you when. All right. Uh... Let me just move off camera here. <laughs> uh... <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, we're getting a no chipmunk response from okay. out in the world. Uh, and we'll see how that uh, crackling evolves over time. Keep us posted out there. Please do. Because this is not a live stream about crackling. It's a live stream about phasing. Exactly. <laughs> if I had the foresight, I would probably have different mics and maybe had phasing. But anyways. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Moving cool. onwards. Yeah. So that's phasing. I think we all have a good idea at this point what phasing sounds like. Cool. Uh, we talked a lot about it in the context of music. It adds, you know, just that extra dimension to to music production. But I do want to stress here that phasing is not an effect that's constrained to pedals and plugins. It's in fact a real acoustic phenomenon. You see it, you can see it in real life. Now it's is it uh is it an effect that happens often? I would argue no, but it does happen. And no, because there are certain conditions. Uh, the way that the way that wave physics works, it sort of makes it so that it's kind of hard to hear at least really clear phasing in real life. But having said that, 
one of our colleagues here at AK was was blessed by the by the acoustics gods. And while he was on vacation, he ran across this fountain and he was able to hear a shockingly clear effect of phasing. And I'm going to play that here. He would, you know, this this is a, you know, this is a, I think, a characteristic of us working, working any 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 person working in audio. You know, we I think we have this quirk where we hear something, we're like, oh, we gotta we gotta record that. And I'm I'm happy to state that uh, our colleague is uh, is exactly the same way. So for <laughs> our benefit, he's captured this uh, this wonderful video. So I'm going to play it back. Uh, another volume warning. It's uh, it's going to be a little bit noisy, but uh, it's going to be very interesting. Wow. Yeah. So when when he shared that with me, I was like, this is fake. It's got to be fake. Uh, and he assured me it's not. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm inclined to believe him. So uh, pers- if, if you're watching, dear colleague of AK, I believe you. And this is this is seriously a wonderful <laughs> example of phasing. Um- <laughs> Post minimalist in the chat says that fountain sound is crazy. And isn't it? It's, yeah. Yeah. And and I, I'll point out here, actually, you'll notice that um, you'll notice that the camera is being moved. Um, you know, when 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 the camera sort of moves back, we hear that sort of phasing changing. And it kind of reminds me of that, you know, that that flanging effect back in music, you know, how it changes. But we're hearing that here in in real life. Um, now, keep this keep this fountain example in the back of your mind. We're going to we're going to come back to it actually a few times in this uh, in this little presentation. So let's talk about the physics and maybe not play that again. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's jump right into the, uh, into the physics. So I'm going to keep it simple. There's not going to be any equations or anything, no math, nothing like that. We'll try to keep things as intuitive as possible. If we want to understand phasing the physics behind it, we need to talk about wave interference because that's exactly what phasing is. And before uh, we dig into wave interference, let's mm-hmm. dig into crackling interference on your microphone. Mm. We're still struggling with it over here a bit, and uh, I'm not quite sure where that's coming from. Uh, I wonder if uh, trying to change audio input sources back and forth a bit, uh, either in the... Uh, screen share utility mm-hmm. or potentially disabling it over in the uh, video camera utility, uh, one of those places. Uh, we'll get okay. there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to briefly stop sharing my screen. Cool. I, I think I might have an idea where this could be coming from. Sounds good. Yep, yep. This is... Real time problem solving, and if you're a follower of Wise Up on Air, you know that. Uh, and Alan actually reassured me before we started that uh, no good live stream gets away without some level of technical challenge. So I'm whew, wish it weren't so, but uh, that's what we're here for to solve these problems in real time while we're trying to bring you the best in uh educational experience around phasing i find it really funny that for anything audio if you work in audio the uh, number one problems that you're going to have is going to be in audio always (laughs) in audio uh that sadly had no change over oh, no. here. Okay. So I'm going to tr- see. I'm going to try forcing a couple things just uh, to see if I have any opportunity. How about now? Check, check, check one, two. Any improvement? Any crackling? Still a little bit of crackling. Is All my right. gain up way too high? Nope. I don't know. It's, it's kind of more of a zippering ish kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to try wiggling that. 
Ooh, okay. I hear you out of my left ear. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. Uh, but now you should just hear me again yep. the right way. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to try doing this. And let's see if that changes anything. Go ahead. Check, check, check one, two. Still a little clippy. All right. Uh, that all looks fine. We won't monoize that. Hmm. All right. I could try, as sort of a last resort, I could try rebooting my audio interface, see if that helps anything. Ooh. That sounds wild. Uh, but talk again for me for a second. Mm -hmm. yep. Let's see. Uh, talking, talking. Let's see if check, maybe. Check, check one, two. Okay, so word is that some amount of wiggling may have helped. Okay. Uh, and let's just make sure that volume is balanced across our voice. Ah, the chat also concurs that things okay. are sounding better. That's good, that's uh, good. And I think away we go. All right. Get your screen share back up, and we are bing, 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 knocking out be problems. Almost there. As soon as I figure out how to uh, how this uh, how does this Zoom thing work, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's minimized, and now I'm trying to get it back. Where is it? Oh. <laughs> well, hopefully, it's the least of our problems today. I uh, yeah, I hope that crackling doesn't come back, but uh, we'll see. Okay, cool. All right, we're back. I'm sure. I... We're and seeing as, some waves. And as soon as you screen share, it came back. As soon as I screen shared, it came back. Yeah. Okay. Are you hearing it too on your end? I am. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. cool. Okay. Sh shall we pivot to a different scenario where you actually screen share in our other utility, uh, but without audio, maybe? Hmm. Challenge. Uh, Hmm. Good question. That would uh that would be a a kick puts it. Want to try either a reboot of the audio interface while screen sharing or toggling when you're screen sharing between different audio sources. Hmm. So this is now we're reframing the live stream and exercise in audio uh, solution. Uh, we're even getting suggestions from the chat to help us solve it. It seems like the active screen sharing is taking CPU cycles, potentially I, interfering yeah. with your computer's ability to process the microphone. CPU overload, like in a DAW with too many plugins, this is audio right here. Thank you for that perspective. I can totally <laughs> believe it. Uh, so I, um, I, I try to, so what I've done was I've uh, basically closed down a bunch of other applications. Still back, and still there. It's still, it's still there. Hey, okay. So Unreal's not the problem then. Okay. Ah, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. You, you had a you had no, no. moment. You're doing okay. great. I'm going to try to kick the uh kick the audio interface. Yeah. Maybe literally. We'll see. Wow. Be right back. Uh great suggestions from the chat and uh thank you for your patience while we get this sorted. It's uh as Alan was saying, usually the audio folks who have to handle this We'll be sure to excerpt this section of troubleshooting and problem solving and reframe it as how to fix your audio problems on the fly when you're live streaming a symposium, if you will. Uh, uh, so it'd be interesting to know if any folks out there have been using Reflect yet in their projects. Um, again, this is a way to bring a kind of sense of space to the geometry of your experiences, uh, informing uh, the sound of the environment with these early reflections. Um, 
give us a shout out in the comments on this video if you've used Reflect in uh, one of the projects you've worked on. Uh, always cool to see what folks are doing out there in the community. And I know we'll be back up and at it here in just a second uh, as Alan works through the uh, challenges with microphone crackling. So thanks for your, again for your patience. Ah, so so a comment from the chat uh, that that they've not used it before, but have used a custom or simplified uh, early reflection solution. Uh, and definitely interested in Wise Reflect. That's great to have you here. Great to have your interest. Yeah, again, Reflect goes hard and deep into this uh, representation of uh, geometric reflections. So, you know, we've invested a lot of time and experience and really leveraged the science to try and bring this into a place where it represents reality. Uh, while also giving these kind of creative controls and helping give tools to solve problems. Uh, Damien, can you hear me? I can hear you. And it okay. sounds like a different microphone, but there's yeah. no crackling. There's uh, no crackling. Okay, that's good. We might have to deal with this. It sounds great. Then. Does it? Okay, great. Yeah. How do you uh, feel just... about a screen share now to see if uh, the crackling comes back? Uh, just give me one moment. Let me just get some stuff set up again, and then we'll be back on our way. I mean, I think it, your new microphone is actually perfect because we can hear some of the early reflections in that room. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's good. <laughs> you can uh, you can hear the uh, the early reflections of my room. My room here. Yeah. Actually, while while we're on that topic, my bedroom has this really weird sort of impulse frequency. When you, whenever you clap your hands, you can actually hear the uh, sort of like the butterfly effect from from the uh, the sound of the clap, just kind of go bouncing in between walls. And uh, it's really cool to listen to, but it gets a little bit annoying because we we have a fan in our room that that's going going at night, yeah. and for some reason, like it just changes that sound so much that it, that it just sort of like wakes me up in the middle of the night and you know my brain's like you know still groggy I'm still my brain's still trying to like process what's you know the stimuli that's that's uh that's coming coming into me and I just like have this weird sort of sense of like anxiety slash what's going on you know it's yeah it's, it's like mixture of excitement and and anxiousness that happens it's a you know there, there's got to be some research out there that uh that uh, correlates, you know, different sounds and effects to so your cognitive, uh, cognitive things going on. I'm not too sure what that would be, but well, there's rooms not enough research out there. I don't think. <laughs> Perhaps, yeah. Okay, so I have things up and running. How's my audio? Are we still okay? Audio is good, and now your video has slowed down to a strange frame rate that I'm not uh, familiar with. That's expected. Uh, Unreal is kind of starting up in the background here, so <laughs> it yes. should should catch up. Hopefully, anyways. Cool. Now I'm gonna share my screen. Yeah. Zoom. Zoom really likes to be in this mini mode. Okay, share screen, share sound. Let's go. All right, audio check. Hello, hello, hello. So far, Any so good. Great. Uh, keep talking. Let's see what happens. Talking, talking, talking. Talking without crackling. Talking without no. crackling. Talking. Presentations crackling. going. Presentation. I see movement. Your All right. Your camera's still a little out of sync. You might try, um, you know, unpresenting and representing it, or uh, activating and deactivating it over in the camera share. Okay, I think we might be good now. It looks it looks synchronized. I saw it was kind of behind by like two seconds, but it might be okay. Oh, it's caught up, and I it's think caught you're up. Right. I think you're awesome. Right. Are we off to the races? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks again for folks' patience. We are back with hopefully audio, no static. 
video no lag and reflections with or without phasing let's jump right back into it bam so all right uh where were we we were talking wave about wave interference. interference that's right yes so we need to talk about wave interference why because that's exactly what uh what phasing is um and so waves that so if you have two waves that meet, there's going to be interference that's going to happen. It's going to be one of two kinds. You're going to have, you could have constructive interference where that resulting wave is going to have a higher amplitude, or it's going to be destructive where the resulting wave's amplitude is going to be minimized or even just canceled out entirely. Um, and so in this nice little animation, we got a really simple, simple demonstration. We've got two waves, a blue one and an orange one. And the red wave is that sort of resultant wave that comes from the interference. So basically what's happening here is that the blue wave is staying stationary, but we're going to change the time delay of that orange wave, um, or to put it in other terms, in more technical terms, we're going to be changing the phase of that orange wave. And so when we change, when we increase the delay time, of that orange wave, we're gonna see some crazy interference starting to happen. So when those peaks are lined up, we start, we see that the red wave has a high amplitude, that's constructive interference. And as we increase the time delay of that orange wave, we start to see that amplitude decrease all the way down to zero before it goes back up again. So that's interference in a nutshell. Here's a really simple demonstration with really simple sine waves. But the thing is, is that in the real world, real sounds are much more complex than just simple sine waves. And in fact, they're actually made up of a number of different frequencies. Yeah. So. And is wave interference, can we also think of it as uh, as cancellation of- Exactly. Of something? Yeah. Uh, so, okay, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're gonna to touch a little bit on that actually uh, right. in in just some in, in a couple of minutes. Cool, so, cool. Yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, real world has much more complex waves. They're made up of a number of frequencies, so it's more useful for us. By the way, spoilers from uh, <laughs> <laughs> from from what I just said a minute ago. Um, so it's more useful for us to look at the spectrum, we want to see what happens at all the frequencies of a given sound. And so what we're seeing here is a spectrum and signals with phasing tend to have this sort of characteristic pattern of having peaks and notches. Um, and if you sort of squint enough, you, you can sort of think that, hey, this kind of looks like teeth of a comb, which is where Ooh. the term comb filter comes from, another sort of DSP term out there, but I'm sure it's used quite frequently in music production as well. Um, but that's where, that, that's where that term comes from. And so this pattern that we're seeing here is when, when this reaches our ears, that's what we perceive as that classic phasing sound that we saw in that, uh, in that fountain demo and with the drums. Um, so this, this spectrum, it's telling us the kinds of interference that's happening with, with every frequency. So if we look at about 250 Hertz, we see that there's a notch and that's telling us that there is destructive interference happening. That resulting amplitude for that particular frequency is getting smaller and smaller. Whereas at about 500 Hertz, we see a, we see a peak and that's constructive interference. And that's where the resulting amplitude for that frequency is getting boosted. So yeah, phasing is interference, but it's this really wonderful mess of interactions that's happening at all sorts of different frequencies. Wonderful mess is my favorite description so far. You know, I think that uh, that's that sums up a lot of things in in audio and and life for that matter. You know, there's a, there's a <laughs> wonderful mess of things that that happens. It keeps life interesting, right? Bam. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So speaking of wonderful messes, um, anybody who's mic'd drums at all is going to be super familiar with phasing. They're going to know that if you don't place the microphones properly, then your drums are going to sound thin and hollow, much like the demo that we uh, that, that we showed earlier. Um, and what's basically happening is that if you have mics that are just sort of far apart, 
then the sound that's coming from that, the sound waveform that's coming from that drum is going to hit one mic before the other. And if the difference between the two, those two times of arrivals is literature says less than 20 milliseconds, then that's when phasing starts to get really prominent. And so here we're seeing an effect of that wavefront reaching microphones at, at different times. So, so across microphones, yeah. you'll get different frequency responses for the same sound. Exactly. Yeah. Because of the phase uh, or time of arrival. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So taking what we learned so far, I want to go back to that fountain example because... Yeah. I want to ask, like, what the heck is going on? Um, and so, what uh, what that? I want to start off by saying what that video didn't show you, and I believe I haven't touched on it yet. But um, it, what what the video didn't show you was that behind the camera there was a wall, and that wall is going to be quite important to why we're hearing phasing. So there's there's this animation happening here. There's there's a bunch going on. Let me walk you through it. On the left here, we have a sort of like a simulation of that fountain example. So we have the wall, we have the fountain as a sound source, and then we have the listener that's approaching closer and closer to the wall. But there's also these two lines, and those are the paths that the sound waves take from the fountain to reach the listener. So there's a direct path going to the listener, not obstructed, but then there's also this reflection that's going off of the wall before hitting the listener. On the right, we have the spectrum. And so we can see sort of the changes to the spectrum as the listener moves to the wall. And then at the bottom, we're just sort of recording the times of arrival of those waves from the different paths. So when the listener moves closer to the wall, we see that the time of arrivals of the direct path and the reflection path, the sound waves traveling there, we start to see that the time of arrival starts to converge into one place. That, that gap between the direct path and the reflective path starts to get smaller and smaller. And as a result, as it gets less than 20 milliseconds, as it gets closer and closer to one millisecond, we see the spectrum start to take on that really prominent comb pattern that we see that we saw a couple of slides back. So the closer you move to the wall, the more phasing that you're going to hear. Really interesting, right? Totally. And we we have a so there's a, there's a bit of a takeaway here, and it's that reflections have a big component or are a big component into phasing. And so talking about reflections, that brings us to reflect. Reflect works with reflections. It's a early reflections generator. That is the first few reflections that reach us as a listener from a room. That's what gives us this sort of sense of the space of the of the environment. And it turns out those first few milliseconds of reflections are a really big factor in that perception. And that's what reflect renders. And so that kind of begs the question here. Okay, I want to zoom if, out on that for a second, though. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Informs our sense of space within a room, right? So that's right. It helps us understand the difference between, you know, being in a tiled bathroom versus mm -hmm. being in a warehouse. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And we're talking specifically about that early reflection piece, which is those first reflections or bounces off of the walls in that space exactly that return to you and give you that sense of space there's mm -hmm. another piece of this that uh that i know you're going to talk about but i want to underline it here and that's late reflections mm -hmm. so how do yeah. early reflections compare to late reflections yeah, so late reflections are, I think it's the, I would say it's sort of like the other piece of the puzzle, whereas the early reflections kind of give you that initial sense of, yeah. you know, of how large your space is. I, I tend to think of late reflections as sort of like the, 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 the second piece of the puzzle. It's what sort of completes that sort of perspective of, um, of, the, um, of the room that, that you're in. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
I think of late reflections almost like uh, defining the character of the space. Say, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, whereas early reflections, you know, give you a much clearer picture of size, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and directionality, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whereas late reflections or diffuse, sometimes called diffuse reverb, uh, mm -hmm. is more characteristic, uh, may have more of a flavor to it. Definitely, yeah. Uh, the the early reflections, again, inform that understanding of size, directionality, based on those discrete um, bounces or reflections mm -hmm. off of geometry. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I, I'm glad you uh, you, you uh, sort of pulled me back here because I, I got a little bit too excited to uh, to show the next slides here, I but I, I do think it's worth noting here, you know, just to, to kind of explain what's going on here in the, yeah. in the illustrations and especially this left one, because this is um, this is sort of like an example. Uh, actually, it's from our integration demo example. So if you want to try it out, it's uh, it's available on uh, in wise. Uh, but it's showing the the yellow and the orange paths are showing us the the reflections. And so from why spatial audio, you know, we have the geometry, why spatial audio calculates, you know, where the reflections are coming from, you know, where it's going to be bounced off of before shipping that information to reflect where we actually render those reflections. Um, the yellow lines are going to be the first order reflections. They're going to have, you know, they're going to bounce at one point off of a surface before hitting the listener versus the orange lines, which will bounce off of two surfaces before reaching the listener. So that's second order reflections. Um, and just to the right here is the, the plugin UI. And we're going to be seeing this uh, a number of times, you know, as we, as we move on. Right. And you talked about first and second order reflect goes up to fourth order. So that would be mm -hmm. four different bounces. That's right. Uh, so again, kind of blurring into that late reverb space, right? So mm -hmm. it really does define up front with first order, the initial um, reflections. Mm -hmm. But then as you increase the number of orders and reflect, it starts to blur into that late reverb space. Uh, and yeah. we'll, here's some examples of, of how that manifests and, uh, once we get into the demo. Yeah, totally. All right. So we have this reflection plugin. We know that reflections can be a big part of, you know, of phasing. So the question now is, can we recreate that fountain with Wise? So let's do just that. So well, that Unreal handy that we have here. handy that we have the Wise Audio Lab which is a sample that's available to download through the Audio Kinetic Launcher. It's our Unreal uh, demo sample uh, using WISE. You can go grab it today to get your hands and ears on it. And uh, yeah, what do you got cooking? Well, first of all, I'm pretty amazed that, uh, you know, it's just like this interesting coincidence that we have, a, we, we happen to have a map in Wise Audio Lab, that's a fountain, and uh, we had that example with a fountain. So it was, uh, it was, it was just, just perfect timing. It's kind of like the stars aligned. But yeah, we got a fountain. We have a wall. Let's go to that wall and let's hear what happens. Are we going to get phasing or not? Inquiring minds want to know. All right, so we're in the field. That's clearly not a. Uh, there's no no fountain in sight. And just before we dive into things here, I just want to start a profiling session. Yep. And, and you're connecting let's... wise to Unreal right now so that they're connected and you're getting information from Unreal about what Wise is doing or 100 percent Exactly. Yeah. Cool. This is the uh, this is the magic of Wise right here. Totally. So, I've muted the fountain sound. Um, now the fountain sound is just regular pink noise. We're trying to sort of emulate what we're what we were seeing in that uh, in that fountain video. 
But, and here's the wall here. So let's, uh, let's start here, a little bit further back. Let's bring the fountain sound again and just listen to what happens when I start to approach that wall. So muting that sound again, but you can you can hear that as we move closer and closer to that wall, we started to hear that very characteristic phasing sound that we saw in the video. And also, it. I'm hoping you heard it. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Now let's just stop this for a second. We'll leave. We'll leave Wise. Uh, we'll leave the profiling session out and running there. Okay. So. Just to give a little bit more detail on, on what's going on, uh, this is a sample from the GameObject 3D Viewer, um, a tool that we can that you can find in the uh, in the profiling section in Wise, um, and we see that there's the same thing going on in our simulation a few slides back. We have the fountain, and it's taking two paths to reach the listener. There's a direct path, and then there's also the reflected path, and when those two are combined, we hear that phasing. And hey, that's great. You know, that's um, you know, I think that's a point towards you know having reflect accurately, you know, simulate the acoustics of a given room or environment. That's awesome. We get to hear phasing just like we did in in the video. But that sounds a little bit distracting. And if you were, if this was in a game, it's probably going to detract from the experience a little bit. And so this is where we start to find that balance between accurately simulating acoustics and leveraging the creativity, uh, the creativity space here. So, because right. as we've defined, like, this is a phenomenon in real life. This is what happens. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But that's not, reality is not always where you want to take the experience. So, exactly. Yeah. So perfect illustration of that. Let's see what we can do to shape that. Exactly. So in WISE 23.1, we have a couple of tools to help you sort of dampen the more egregious aspects of phasing. And we're going to start with the simplest one here. It's a tool that we like to call clustering. And so earlier, we mentioned that if sound waves with time of arrival differences are less than 20 milliseconds, if phasing arises from that, then why not just take those reflections and make one logical reflection, one effective reflection, and then fuse that into the direct path. And so that's the idea with clustering. So here's the, to sort of illustrate that point, on the left before clustering, we have a source moving towards the listener. There's three paths that it takes. Path A and B have times of arrival of 18 and 19 milliseconds. That's a difference of one millisecond. And chances are we're going to hear some phasing from that. But path C takes a bit longer to reach the listener. So the idea is, is that we are going to make a cluster of path A and B. There's only going to be one reflection and it's gonna be fused into this orange line here. That's the direct path. So you're effectively kind of getting rid of those reflections, but also not really, you're just using them. But you're going to leave path C unchanged. So the question is now, or not the question is, but let's let's hear let's hear a clustering in action here. So we're gonna open up the Unreal demo again. We're gonna come back to this fountain. Starting in the field again. Let's fire up that uh, fountain sound again and let's move towards the wall. Phasey. Very phasey. And uh, looks like the frame rate's a little leggy at the moment. There we go. All right. Awesome. 
I'll take All right. it. I'm gonna mute that for a second here. So yeah, we're back. We hear phasing. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the clustering. So clustering can be enabled if we look at the wise reflect UI. There's this parameter here called direct sound max delay. And when you adjust the slider, you can move it from zero to whatever number you'd like. But the units here are in milliseconds. So let's say we want to remove all of the reflections within 20 milliseconds. And let, let's see what happens. So let's bring back the fountain sound and let's listen to the phasing. Yeah. So you hear that phasing is pretty much removed. And that's because we're quite literally removing the source of that uh, of that phasing. We're taking those reflections and we're fusing into the direct path. So there's no time differences of arrivals that will give us the phasing scenario. So let's just do another comparison here. Nice. We got that phasing sound. Let's change this to 20 milliseconds. No more phasing. Awesome. So there's that, uh, that that's clustering in a nutshell. Excellent. Um, so like I mentioned before, uh, you can enable this by setting direct sound max delay to anything other than zero. Um, so when that happens, the pads with delay times, uh, the time of arrivals differences that are less than 20 milliseconds or whatever value you choose, those reflections are going to be merged into the direct path. And a good part of this method is that not only do you remove the phasing, but you also get some computational savings too, because you're effectively removing the reflections and you only have the one effective reflection. And so you don't have to render all of those other reflections. So you got some CPU in there. Yeah, um, unfortunately. You cut, the, out, you cut out the sound uh, and simultaneously optimize the whole uh, process. Exactly, yeah. Um, so yeah, sounds great and all. The only downside to this approach is that when you're merging paths, uh, when you're when you're merging, fusing those reflections, it's only to the direct path. Now, if you had a bunch of reflections, but a lot of these reflections have are centered around different times of arrivals differences, it, you you're not able to get a group of clusters. Um, instead, it's just sort of brute force looking at time of arrival differences. Is it less than this? It's going straight to the direct path. So that's one thing to consider here. That's clustering. Nice. The other, by the way, I don't know if you can hear this, but uh, there's the uh, the ambient noises the in the seagulls. wise audio lab. The yeah. seagulls. <laughs> Love it. Adding some ambience to the uh, to the stream. Yeah. Um, so that's decorrelation. Let's let's move on to the next tool. And this next tool is what we like to call decorrelation. And to understand, to better understand what decorrelation actually is, I'm going to pull another acoustic phenomenon to help describe decorrelation. And that's going to be scattering. So when an acoustic wave is reflected off of a surface, there's some of that energy is going to be scattered. So you're still going to have a reflection going towards the listener, but you're also going to get what I like to think of as a series of mini reflections, kind of like emanating from that point of reflection. And you can think of those scattered rays as sort of like mini reflections that are going to, that where some of them are going to mix with the main reflection before it reaches the listener. So it's almost like you're getting more reflections. Um, and there's a really interesting effect from this. Well, so um, my my simple analogy of that is like table tennis, uh, ping mm. pong, right? Mm. Uh, you okay. bounce that ping pong ball off of uh, the flat surface mm -hmm. and uh, pretty reliably is going to uh, bounce according to its angle of mm -hmm. uh, influence. And yep. uh, now imagine that uh, you make that surface uh, bumpy 
give it a right. bunch of uh, rough spots. And now you can't be assured that that ping pong is always going to bounce off the table in the same way for any trajectory because of all of those different areas. So it is effectively scattering uh, with a little bit more um, imprecision comparatively. Mm -hmm. So that's kind yeah. of my mental model for that. Yeah, yeah. And that's a, I think that's a pretty good analogy. Um, one sort of edit that I'll make to that is that um, if you, th there's, there's the uncertainty in where that ping pong ball is going to bounce, like where the direction that it's going to bounce. I think, I like to think of that as the scattering a bit, but also it's important to note that um, there's, the the ping pong ball when it when it bounces off of that surface it will bounce in in a predictable trajectory so there is that happening but yeah. for the scattered bits there is that uncertainty that you're talking about yeah. and exactly like depending on how rough that surface is you're going to get scattering in all sorts of different directions like i said another wonderful mess <laughs> <laughs> yeah and in this case you're using the mess to great effect exactly yeah um, so yeah, like I mentioned before, you can think of the scattered rays as a bunch of mini reflections. And those mini reflections are going to have different, they're, they're going to have these the peaks and valleys, but those peaks are going to be in different frequencies. And so what happens is when you mix a bunch of these together, then a peak from one mini reflection might line up with a notch from another reflection. And that's what we're showing here. I have different reflections, each with different delays. And when they mix together, you see this sort of lining up happening. And so you go from this comb pattern, this really defined comb pattern, and your spectrum becomes uh, be, starts to become flatter. And so it's reducing that phasing effect. It's not perfect, but it's definitely reducing it. Um, and so that's you can you can think of decorrelation as sort of like this sort of scattering effect and that scattering effect can be modeled as a filter which is a part of a broader family of filters that that that's a, that are called decorrelation filters um scattering is only one way that you can design a decorrelation filter there are other ways and decorrelation filters also have applications in other things too other than reducing phasing Nice. So if we look at the processing chain for a second here, the way it works is that a reflection is going into a decorrelation filter where it's going to get a little bit scrambled up, but still, you know, the sound, the overall sound is going to be recognizable. Um, all of the reflections go through this filter before they get mixed together um, and to the to the output, which uh, which we hear. So that's decorrelation filters. WISE 23.1 is going to have two different kinds of filters, and we call them decorrelation modes. So starting off with what we call the performance mode, the decorrelation filter that we use for this mode is based on the acoustic scattering phenomenon that we were, we were just talking about in the last five minutes here. Yeah. Um, so let's hear what that sounds like. Yeah. Let's turn that uh, let's turn that fountain on again. Get some phasing. And I got to remind myself, I'm not listening. I'm not hearing phasing because clustering is active. So let's turn nice. that off. Perfect. We got that phasing. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the decorrelation mode to favorite performance. And then you can change the aggressiveness of that filter by changing the decorrelation strength. So let's see that in action. Yeah, that really does reduce the hollowness of uh, of the phasing when uh, decorrelation is at zero. Yeah, exactly. Um, I do think that it is a little, it is important to note here that the decorrelation filters are not going to be a hundred perfect. We hundred percent perfect. Sorry, 
we I mentioned before that mixing a bunch of different ways help uh, a bunch of the different reflections will help reduce the help reduce the the effects of the comb filtering it'll make the spectrum flatter but it's not perfect um, because you can see in this thick red line here that even though we're mixing reflections together we're still going to get these sort of, sorts of bumps in the uh, in the frequency spectrum um, and that's what we like to call spectral coloring and so when you use the <laughs> the seagulls <laughs> so when you use decorrelation filtering Yes, the phasing is going to be mitigated, but you may get some spectral coloring. Um, and that seems to be quite prominent with the performance mode. Uh, and I like to think of this, or rather the, I, I like to think that, you know, the performance mode might be better su suited towards different kinds of sounds. With a fountain example, we have the pink noise and that's, sort of like a constant wide band spectrum sorts of noise. And so you're going to hear that coloring really easily. And so I'm going to try a different sound here. I'm going to use the radio. So let's uh, let's put a radio here. Yep, and for folks who haven't used the WISE Audio Lab, the radio is a tool that you can use. Uh, you can put it anywhere you want. You can fix its position. You can rotate it around. It is one of the ways that you can test uh, these different environmental uh, phenomenon uh, with a sound source that is uh, positionable from within the game. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a uh, comment that decorrelation uh, makes makes him think about multi-channel audio. How does Reflect translate to immersive formats? Ah, I think I'm going to touch on that a little bit later because awesome. there's there's a neat feature that uh, that I think touches on uh, on that question. All right, thanks for the question. Uh, we'll circle back to it and as you were. All right, so uh, I'm going to make the radio play some music. It's not the default music, but I'm going to bring back that drum beat. Uh, that, uh, that we heard earlier today. So let's bring it over here. And let's move closer to the wall. Let's try to get some good phase in here. I think that's good. There we go, perfect. Let's go back to Y. Let's mute that for a second. So yeah, you, when I started to move closer to the wall, we started to hear that sort of like thinned out sound that we that we heard earlier uh, in the presentation when we listened to the sound of the drums with phasing. Um, and so I'm going to use I'm going to add the decorrelation filter and let's have a look at let's let's have a listen to how that sounds. So here we can definitely hear some of the phasing in the drums, but when we turn up the decorrelation filter, say to 65, we can still we can still sort of hear the spectral coloring, but it's a lot more subtle compared to when we applied it towards the fountain noise. And so I think a good takeaway here is that different sounds are going to be suited to different uh, decorrelation methods, and here it's seems like the, the the performance mode of decorrelation filter actually works quite well. Um, while, while the coloring is there, it's it's definitely a lot more it's definitely a lot more subtle. Um, well, and I'd, the, I'd, I'd exchange a little bit of coloring for the reduction in hollowness that's definitely easily yeah. easy to hear uh, on the cymbal crash when it loops back around. Like mm -hmm. uh, I would take a little bit of coloration in exchange for the reduction of that. Yeah. Um, and also we're, we're going to touch on a different, uh, different decorrelation mode here, but I, I think it's worth mentioning right now that the computation time for uh, decorrelation performance mode compared to the quality mode, which we're going to touch on next, uh, is going to be it's going to be smaller. So when it comes down, right down to the crunch, you know, we're trying to find ways to save CPU. 
consider performance mode if you're using decorrelation filters. So that being said, quality mode. Okay, so what's going on here? Uh, so I mentioned before that there's different ways to d design decorrelation filter modes, um, de decorrelation filters rather. And while the favorite performance decorrelation mode filter is based more off of a scatter acoustic scattering model. Here we're taking more of an algorithmic approach. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that, but mm -hmm. just know that it's a different sort of way of designing decorrelation filters. So let's uh let's have a listen. Let's mute the radio. And and, and like you mentioned, with quality comes uh the in increased uh CPU cost. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to bring back the fountain. Uh, let, let me just double check that. There we go. Strength is off. All right. Let's bring back the fountain sound. So we hear that phasing. Let's change the decorrelation mode to favor quality and bring up the strength. So we got phasing here, bringing it up. So here we see that, you know, the phasing again is reduced. Um, you can still kind of hear some of the spectral coloring happening there, but compared to the performance mode decorrelation filter, it's a lot more subtle. Mm -hmm. And that's the that's the, the the advantage of using the quality mode decorrelation filter. Can you get the uh, can you get the um, the filter strength set at a reasonable amount uh, and then switch between quality and performance modes Ooh, so we okay. can hear how those uh, compare across the content? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Um, so let's bring back the fountain. So back to 0%, yep, we got phasing. I would yeah. say maybe about there is good. I like Thank it. You, Damien. Yep. Yeah, that sounds right. good. Let's, let's flip the switch over. Oh, interesting. All right, let's go back to quality, performance. So yeah, there's there's definitely a bit of a topper change, right? Uh, totally. Which is expected. The filters are they do work a little bit differently, and so they're going to have different different characteristics. But, um, but yeah, and I, really, it know, highlights different tools for different content as you mentioned it may be applicable to yeah. some and not others um, mm -hmm. but tools to help mitigate yep exactly and you know it's it's one of those things where you can experiment around you know like you alluded to you know figure out you know what's good for your environment what your sound yeah exactly right right on the right on the money there Damien. nice <laughs> okay so that those are the the uh the phase mitigation tools that you can try out in WISE 23.1. We heard how they sound. We talked about some of the pluses and minuses for different approaches. Um, and I will note also that um, we are going to have a blog coming out in the Audio Kinetic website. It's going to be filled with loads more information on, um, on phasing mitigation. So watch out for that. I believe that's coming out in January, if I'm not mistaken. Keep them peeled. Uh, and if you're signed up through the uh, audiokinetic.com customer portal, uh, there's a toggle in your settings to get notified when we do launch those blogs. So if you want to make sure you catch it, get that toggled on and we'll send you a notification when that launches along with the other series in the 23.1 Spatial Audio Features blogs that we have coming out. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be exciting. There's tons of great features in in wide spatial audio. Uh, okay, so 
Right. Phasing mitigation, the tools from, for for uh, phasing mitigation, the tools that we provide. There is one more thing though. Um, and I mentioned that decorrelation filters have a, uh, they, they have other applications other than mitigating phasing. And one of them is for stereo image widening, which is really interesting. Uh, now, I think this might sort of allude to, uh, rather, th this might uh, be related to the question about multi-channel audio um, and, and how reflect uh, how reflect affects that, possibly. But uh, that, that's what it reminded me of when uh, when when I uh, when I heard that question. But yeah, decorrelation filters can are used in stereo image widening, and we have that feature in Reflect too. So I haven't really quite uh, rehearsed this, so we're gonna be kind of be we're gonna be going ad hoc a little bit and see see how that uh, see let's let's see what happens. Cool, we can handle it. All right, so let's go back to the uh, let's go back to that. Um, that drum sound. So uh, let me unmute this. All right, let's turn it on. Okay, so to turn on the, the stereo widening feature, there is this widened stereo field. Now there's some caveats to this. When you want to enable this feature, you need to have decorrelation strengths set to values other than zero. Um, they're tied to the kinds of decorrelation filters as well too. So if you choose favorite quality, then it's going to use the favorite quality decorrelation filter type to do the stereo widening. The other important thing to note here is that your distance spread curve needs to be set to some non-zero value. So right now it's set to zero, so we're not really gonna hear much of an effect. So I'm just gonna modify this uh, really quickly here, take on some value other than zero. Cool. And let's listen to that again. Let's exaggerate this a little bit. Okay, so why the stereo field is off, let's turn it on. You can hear that the stereo image is a little bit more focused when it's off, but when I turn it on, we can sort of hear that subtle widening. Yeah. All right, so that's stereo widening in a nutshell. It's a really cool little feature that we've added. Try it out, see uh, see if you like it or not. Nice. A uh, couple question coming in from the chat, and I think we should circle back to the immersive format uh, question yeah. as well. So, question coming from the chat. Uh, is Wise Reflect running on a single aux bus effect, or is it spawning separate game objects in the world at reflection impact points? Like, describe how Reflect is working, kind of technically. Um, yeah, to help answer that question, if you can. Yeah. So Wise is going to be working off of. Or sorry, when I say Wise, I mean Wise Reflect is going to be working off of one aux bus. And let's let's just pull up actually the the uh, the voice graph here. So yeah, we have the fountain sound, and it's going to uh, it's going to this aux bus, this reflect aux bus, before it goes into into the final mixing process. So I think that answers that question. Right. And so it's. It's a single effect on the aux bus that mm -hmm. we can imagine. Uh, you know, you can have multiple reflect uh, effect instances across your yes. project. That's right. Yeah. Um, and and expect that that behavior is just going to uh, to work the same way. Now, let's dig a little bit more into this idea of immersive formats. And I think um, what Martin means is how about in a spatialized 3D audio scenario? 
where we're using something like Win Windows Spatial Sound. Uh, we're using uh, 3D audio on a PS5, uh, Atmos for headphones, any of these mm -hmm. headphone-based spatial formats. Like, how is Reflect um, translating across those that output type? Yeah, so I think when when we're working with objects in these like sort of sort in these in these special formats, um, we we sort of like give the so in in terms of the correlation like that that part is never never really changed, but um, so that the, there's still going to be filtering that happens into those reflections, but then we're going to get. Uh, each of those reflections, I believe, will be objects, which then get shipped off to the endpoint um, and sort of leaves it to, you know, Atmos or Windows Sonic to sort of to sort of mix. Yep. Uh, yeah. And in the Reflect plugin itself, you have control over the output configuration of Reflect. Exactly. So you can yeah. decide, is that going to be in, uh, you know, different configurations, I think 5171, 714, mm -hmm. ambisonics up to, is it up to fifth order? I uh, believe so, yeah, fifth order right here. Yeah, so, so you have control in the Reflect plugin uh, to be able to output in these configurations, which then when they get to an immersive format um, for spatialization, you know, has, uh, that amount of precision to how the reflections are placed. Uh, and at that point, it is, like you said, up to the uh, the spatialization for that endpoint to then filter it to make it sound like it's coming from that point in space, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe the simple answer to your question, I think, is it totally translates and you have control over the configuration of reflect up to a fifth order ambisonic level of precision. And that means a whole lot of points on the sphere, which need to be calculated and have an impact on the CPU cost. So mm -hmm. exactly, you're making some, you know, balanced decisions there of, uh, how precise to make that in correlation, decorrelation with your uh, CPU resources. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so on totally. that note, question coming in, Reflect is indeed passing relative reflection position into the plugin in order to output spatially accurate reflections. Yeah. Totally. Uh, and if I remember right, like the way that we have updated Wise Reflect in 22.1 using the new simplified Reflect mm -hmm. uh, is that audio objects are, um, you have to set that as the configuration on the bus that you have the Reflect yeah. plugin instantiated on. And then those discrete audio objects and their positioning are delivered to the Reflect plugin. And then uh, from there, we can, um, yeah, effectively position those uh, in the right place as they continue to bounce around. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Any precision to add to that? I, I'm just kind of riffing on on what, no, I, what I, I know. I think you hit the key points. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right, good uh, good questions coming in from the chat. Thanks for mm -hmm, sticking yeah. around with us today. It's great. Thank you. Great. All right. Well, shall we close this off? Uh, here goes one more. Uh, and this okay. is great. Great to have your input. So this is uh, coming in from the chat. They might have missed it, but is the reflection path calculating using both emitter position and listener position that would be one question. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. And from I, I will also note that um, to 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 get the to get the reflections information, uh, like here we were using the spatial audio 
um, we, we were le leveraging wide spatial audio to get that information into Reflect, but uh, that doesn't mean that you cannot use your own solution as well too. Uh, you can have your own separate module that will accept the geometry and calculate those reflections. And then you would ship off that information to Reflect using the raw image source API. So just, just something to note. Ah, so you're talking about the um, another way to go about getting that information. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, exactly. Okay, a second point to that question is from a performance standpoint, can we expect a higher CPU hit, uh, more paths being traced if we have a lot of active emitters? Yes, yeah, you are going to get more CPU usage from that, definitely. <laughs> yeah, and keep us posted because, you know, part of our process here is to, to continually be evolving these tools that people are using out there uh, you know, to help reinforce the environmental information. And as we continue to push on the possibility space of what can be done, we're also simultaneously uh, optimizing performance to make sure that people can reach for these, uh, you know, solutions to, you know, supporting the experiences they're creating um, without fear. Right, just uh, being mm -hmm. able to reach for these things and say, "Oh, this solves my problem," and yeah, the performance uh, I I can I can pay that cost because it's important. Um, but keep us posted as we go through this process of uh, evolving Reflect and let us know how you're thinking. We have uh, feedback channels you can leverage on our Wise Community Q and A. Uh, through our support channel for licensed WISE developers, uh, as well as our bug tracker, and just generally uh, at openears at audiokinetic.com. So send an email anytime. We'd love to hear how you're using Reflect and the things that you're reaching for out there. Yeah, definitely. Cool, and great questions today. Yeah. Should we Absolutely. tie it up with a bow? Let's do it. All right. S so just to uh, just to wrap things up here, so we talked about phasing. We talked about you know the tools that Wise twenty three point one offers to help mitigate ref, uh, excuse me help mitigate phasing. Uh, so phasing it's really an effect of wave interference. It's like I mentioned before a wonderful mess of interference happening with different frequencies, and our ears pick that up as a certain char characteristic sound. You know, and reflections can be a big contributor to that phasing effect. Um, we have the two uh, phasing mitigation strategies, clustering, a very simple approach, works quite well. And then we have the decorrelation filters as well, too. And, you know, it's, um, you know, different combinations might work for, for different approaches, too. So feel free to uh, experiment around, see, see what works for you. And with that... Thank you very much for putting up with some of the sound issues that we've been having. Thank you very much for listening to me blabbing about phasing. I do think it is a very interesting effect and we're gonna continue to improve on, on uh, these tools. Absolutely, thanks Alan so much. I'm putting up the schedule uh, on the screen here for folks who are still with us. Uh, we have four blogs coming out. The revised Oxen model blog just came out yesterday uh, from Nathan Harris, uh, lead of the Spatial Audio team, uh, going deep on that feature that we released as part of 23.1. And then uh, we've got Reverb Zones, that Reflect Phasing Mitigation blog Alan uh, was talking about and wrote, uh, as well as continuous ray casting, all coming out in the next uh, couple of months. Uh, we're here today having the Reflect Phasing Mitigation live stream, and this, uh, a week from tomorrow, <laughs> we'll be having a hands-on with Nathan Harris and Tali Kaklikian, uh spatial audio acoustics getting started in Unreal. We're actually going to, from scratch, uh, you know, create a scenario using uh, wise spatial audio in Unreal from the ground up. So tune back in a week from tomorrow. That's Friday, December 15th. 
1 p.m. Eastern time to go deep on that. Uh, Alan, fantastic. Nice work today. I will, I will add, thank you very much. I'll add the, uh, the spatial audio team has worked really hard uh, at this. It's really amazing stuff. So yeah. next, next week, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Well, today was awesome too. So thanks <laughs> for bringing all of your experience to the live stream. Uh, we had some great uh, conversations throughout. And uh, yeah, I'm stoked for people to get their hands and ears on the technology and you know, find ways to solve problems and expand the creative potential of uh, of early reflections. So yeah, thanks for your thanks so much for having me, Damien. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, let let us know what you think with the uh, the decorrelation tools or even just reflect in general. I'm always happy to hear the comments. Yep, we bring them right back to the developers. So uh, keep them coming. Uh, thanks again. This has been Wise Up on Air, hands on with uh reflect and uh great sweater holidays happy Thank you. holidays all right uh take care folks we'll see you next time bye bye